hey, my name is John and I want to help you be a disciple of Jesus. So in this video, I'm going to give you the number one key to living as a disciple of Jesus. And here's really what you need to know. Being a disciple of Jesus is not so much like a strategy. It's not so much like a step-by-step -step plan. It's a relationship. That's the way discipleship works. In fact, in Mark chapter 3, when Jesus is first calling his disciples, there's a really short, simple little passage that's like super easy to overlook, but it's like really helpful to us to understanding what it means for us to be a disciple. Listen to these words from Mark chapter 3, verse 14. Jesus goes up onto a mountain, calls people to himself. He's going to appoint the 12 as apostles at the same time. This is what it says, Mark 3, 14. And he appointed 12, whom he also designated as apostles, so that they might be, here's the phrase, with him. Catch that? So that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach. In other words, the essence of their discipleship is being with him. You see, Jesus ministered to large crowds of people, right? People would flock to him and he would preach them. So you have all these crowds, but, but those that kind of were the insider group, those that said, you know what? I don't want to just be part of the crowd. I want to move inside. I want to actually get to know Jesus. I want to listen to him and learn from him. They were his disciples and Mark 3.14 tells us kind of the essence of what it means to be a disciple. It means to be with him. This relational context is really just normal and natural and central to the discipleship model that was really prevalent all through Jesus' world. And in some ways we have lost and need to recapture. The way being a disciple worked in Jesus' context was it always happened through a life on life transfer. That's the way discipleship works. Not just an information transfer, but a life on life transfer that happens in relationship by being with the teacher, with the master. So Jesus calls the disciples to be with him. And in their context, that, that was, you know, like very tangible, very physical. It made perfect sense, right? Like they just left what they were doing. In the case of, say, Peter and Andrew, James and John, they left their nets, their fishing boats, and they began to follow Jesus all over Galilee, literally with him, um, listening to him teach, watching him interact with people, uh, withdrawing from the crowds and having sort of like one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus or at least small group time with Jesus. And they literally were with him. And in some ways, that was very challenging for them. You, you hear it almost in like the disciples' question, sort of almost a plaintive question when they say, well, Jesus, we've left everything and followed you. We've left everything to be with you. And I, I'm guessing over the three, three and a half years that they were literally with him, that question probably went through their mind on several occasions. Like, we, we've left everything to be with you. And for them, that was the nature of their discipleship. And so they followed him around literally and very closely to be with him as his disciples. And that's the way discipleship worked in the ancient world. One author des described discipleship with this really powerful phrase. It was a supremely personal union, a supremely personal union. It was like, the way I like to describe it is, it was a transforming friendship. So what is the number one building block to being a disciple of Jesus? It's being with him in a transforming friendship. It's being with him in a transforming friendship. And one of the things we have to remember is that Jesus is just as much alive today as he was 2,000 years ago when he walked the hills of Galilee and his disciples followed him. Yes, the nature of the relationship has changed. We can't physically see him. We can't physically hear him. We can't physically touch him. But he's just, a much, uh, he's just as much alive as he was then. And we can still be with him. And so to be a disciple means we rearrange our life so that we can actually be with Jesus. Just like those first disciples rearrange their life so they could follow him wherever he went. We do the same so that we can listen to him, so that we can learn from him, so that we can read his teaching, so that we can absorb his teaching and, and take it in. We talk with him. We communicate with him. We enter into a transforming friendship with Jesus. 
That's the heartbeat of what it means to be a disciple. So the action step I would give you in order to grow as a disciple of Jesus is to evaluate your life and say, how could I more completely and more intentionally arrange my life so that I can actually be with Jesus in my actual life? And the things I, I do and have to do every day, are there ways that I could rearrange things just so that I can consciously and intentionally be mindful of Jesus, be listening to him and learning from him so that I could be his disciple and enter into that transforming friendship with him. If you want to know more about being a disciple and the next step in what it means to be a disciple, then you can check out these videos right up here. And as always, if you're new here and you haven't yet done so, then feel free to subscribe to my channel so you never miss an episode. God bless you guys, and let's talk again soon.